we're getting scientific up in here. Hey guys, Erwin Yusuf here again. We are back in the kitchen trying out yet another recipe. Today is all about the burger. It is one of the most emblematic fast foods that you'll see out there. Everyone loves them, no one hates them. They're absolutely delicious, but when you make them at home, they just always fall short of what you expect them to be in a fast food restaurant or even just in a restaurant outside. So today, we will attempt to make the best burger that we can make. The first thing we have to do is break down the elements of what makes a perfect burger. A delicious bun, check. And so we got these from Little Flower or Wildflower Group, basically from Pink's, and they're absolutely delicious. I will never attempt to make my own burger buns, let that be clear. Second thing we need is obviously the condiments that you're gonna use. I'm a very simple guy when it comes to burgers and condiments, so I'm gonna be using some cheddar cheese, some lettuce, and just have some good old ketchup. And that brings us to the third and most important element of a burger is the actual beef patty. You've seen absolutely every variation out there from lamb to veal to different cuts of beef to wagyu. So there are a lot of different types of ways to do a beef burger patty. One of the most important rules for me is to look at the fat content. So it's important to have a balance between a very lean cut and a very fatty cut. The fattier your burger blend, the more you'll have to cook it down. So if you're someone who likes a, a well done burger, then you're looking for maybe a 60 to 40% fat versus lean ratio. If you're like me and you like a medium rare, then 70, 30% is your soft spot. And finally, if you're someone that's looking for more of a rare to medium rare, you're looking for 90, 10 or 80, 20. So to get to those ratios, it's really important to use different cuts of beef. So we're using chuck as our main lean cut today. And then we're gonna be messing around and mixing it with various amounts of rump, some short rib, some top plate as well. And just to keep it fun, we'll do one with some pancetta and some bacon. So the most important thing that we're doing today is we're actually grinding our own meat. That way we can control exactly what goes inside. First blend that we're gonna do, we will be using a beautiful lean chuck. And in a super classic combination, adding in some nice fatty short rib. When making burger patties, I'm usually looking for about 180 grams. Anything more than that, it, you might overcook it, and anything under that kind of breaks away. So 180 grams for me has been kind of my sweet spot. So if I wasn't doing this to show you, I'd do it on my marble countertop here so this thing would actually stick, but we're trying our best here. So now I like to pass it through a second time to get it nice and fine. I'm using a medium kind of like, cutter here. So one more time should be absolutely perfect. So stuff back the ground beef inside and then we should be good to go with mix number one. All right, so we have blend number one. I'm gonna keep this aside and we're gonna do the other blends. Blend number two, I got some chuck and then this time I'm gonna add in some top blade. Blend number three, we're gonna use again some beautiful chuck and this time some lovely rump from Balzico beef. And finally, blend number four, the last one we're gonna be doing, some chuck, a little bit of pancetta bacon, and then I'm gonna use this beautiful rib chuck right here. I'm doing it here because it's much easier. See, at least here it's not moving. <laughs> A while ago it was too hard. Still moving. <laughs> Kids, buy an automatic meat grinder. Now that our blends are ready, we just basically need to make the patty. So super simple. I have a weighing scale here. We're getting scientific up in here. And I wanna reach about 180 grams. So we're gonna start first with the Chuck Rump blend. So the Bolzico beef burger. A couple things. You wanna make sure that your blend is nicely mixed together first. And then we're gonna grab about something that looks about like 180, which should be around this. Place it on our weighing scale. 140, 190, 175, 182, 178. All right, let's keep it at 178. You see a lot of shows where they kind of just like, they throw this from left to right and they kind of malleate. The problem with that, it overworks the meat. So it's really important just to shape it once 
and not to mess around with it too much because you want those like weird crispy bits on the side. You want those pockets of air inside the beef. You want the fat to kind of just go all around and you can just really build that flavor. So it's important not to overwork it too much. Once you have something that kind of just sticks together nicely, then that's fine. And then just press it down a little bit. I think for me personally, this looks beautiful. So chuck and rump, let's do that for everything else. Once everything's shaped up, we're gonna go ahead and just season it with some fine salt. I like to do this usually about 30 minutes before cooking it so that the salt really kind of penetrates the burgers nicely. Finally, the last element that we need, obviously, is our cheese. So this one here is from Australia, and what I love about it, it's already pre-sliced, but it's not those like really packaged, super processed, kind of like extremely orange uh, types of cheese you usually see. Um, but it's a delicious one, and obviously, you know, you want your cheese to be so good that you can eat it without cooking it. That's delicious. All we gotta do now is cook it, and when cooking burgers, it's really simple. You wanna put it in a cast iron pan um, without any oil. You wanna start it dry, just get your pan nice and hot. The fat will come out of the burgers and cook the burger for you, so you don't need to add any oil or anything in there. Um, but yeah, basically, once, three minutes, second, three minutes, and maybe flip it a third time if you need to cook it a bit longer to suit your taste. A couple things to remember when you're cooking a burger, make sure not to press down on it because all those juices will escape and all that flavor is retained within those juices. Next, what you wanna make sure is after cooking it, you set it aside just for two minutes, kind of let those juices come back up and so it's not too runny and kind of bloody because I do believe that the best burgers, personally, I find are always cooked medium, medium rare. Next step, take that cheese, place it on the burger, close it up, and then you'll see that all that steam, all that fat, all that flavor will just help kind of melt and bubble away that cheese. So my pan's about hot. What we're gonna do is gonna start on one burger and then I'm gonna assemble them as we go. And finally, obviously, we're gonna toast the bread with a little bit of butter. So I'm not gonna talk through this process. I've talked way too much. So we're just gonna go and show you some really beautiful close-up food shots. Sorry to interrupt the cooking, but I really want to thank the sponsor of this video. Smart is providing you with free YouTube every day as long as you're a prepaid subscriber to programs like Gigasur 50 on Smart, Sun, or TNT. If you're a postpaid Smart subscriber, you automatically get free YouTube every day. How cool is that? And hopefully you guys are watching me with that and that'd be really kind of awesome, like kind of like Inception and stuff. So this promo is active as long as your subscription is active, as simple as that. There's a link down in the description box below Below with any more information that you might need about it. So go ahead and click it, watch this video first, or just open another window and figure that out, and I'll see you guys soon. Perfect burgers, let's go! I think we're doing double cheese on these ones. Really simple now, all our elements are cooked. Start with the bun. I'm using some organic Woodstock ketchup. I really like the flavor of this one. A small little teaspoon of some ketchup. Right at the bottom here. Then I'm gonna put my chuck rump right on it. Look at that side. I love it when things just fit together. It's perfect. And then just because we wanna be a little healthy, I'm gonna add a little bit of lettuce. Close that up. Burger one is complete. Burgers are done, and since a lot of you don't like to believe me when I tell you that my food's actually good, I got two testers with me here today. They're known as the um, it husband and it boyfriend. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, so we have four different types, uh, four, actually four of the same burger, just with different kinds of burger blends, so go for it. We'll start with the chuck and rump. This is actually using Balzigo beef. That is really good. 
chuck and short ribs. So this is a, should be a slightly fattier bite. Mm. Now, I, the other one, I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't tasted this, but the one was maybe more dry than this. So the balls, the balls eagle beef was the worst one for now. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Next, we have a blend. So this is chuck, rib, and some smoked bacon. It looks amazing. Can you look at it? That's good, yeah. This is the chuck top round. This I quite like. I think it's really good. I think this one's my favorite. This one tastes like a, it tastes like a classic burger. I mm -hmm. think, for me, this is my best. This is the favorite. Yeah, it, the, 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 I think maybe the texture also makes it more like a classic burger. It's tighter. But I liked in the second one, it was a lot more loose. It was like you're kind of taking a bite of a really fatty piece of meat. Yeah, yeah. This is more of a classic burger. I think probably for me, it's too, Three, one, four. <laughs> Two, three, one, four. Wow. No, I can't put them last, so for me it's, it's four, one, two, three. Cool, thanks guys. Thanks for cooking. <laughs> that was the fastest burger awesome. you've ever had. So I think that settles it. The most favorite was between number two and number four. Um, and I do have to agree, like those were the most, I guess, beefy and meaty ones. So what we learned today is that there are many different kinds of burger eaters. Someone like Arthur preferred number two, uh, which used a lot of the short ribs, so it's kind of slightly fattier and just really kind of moist and juicy. But Moritz and I preferred number four, which had the top blade, I believe, and was slightly meatier, beefier, slightly less fat, but such a great kind of crumbly texture, which I really like. And that one kind of had these burnt bits on the side, which were absolutely fantastic. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was so much fun shooting it. Play around with your own varieties, play around with your own mixes, and find something that you like eating and that your family likes eating, because at the end of the day you're cooking for yourself and you're cooking for them and that's what makes food so special is that it brings people together and I love that message and hopefully you guys try out the recipes if you do make sure to take a picture send it to me on whatever platform Twitter Facebook Instagram just make sure you hashtag the fat kid inside um, and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video peace out